Hi friends, I'm Amy Ellis and this is So Modern Quilts. I'm really excited to be back with you today for the next installment of the Modern Patchwork Quilt Along. And if you're new to the channel, my goal with So Modern Quilts is to inspire and educate quilters and aspiring quilters just like you with tips and tricks at the sewing machine from my years of experience. I have got all of my pieces pressed and ready to be sewn into quilt blocks. And as you know, the king size is what I'm working towards. If you haven't been sewing along with us or you're not sure what the pattern's all about, there are five sizes included in this fat quarter friendly pattern. And it starts with baby quilts and goes up to a king size quilt. And I have these super lush linens that I am making a bed size quilt for my bed for the winter. To continue on our quilting journey here, we have to make the various blocks. In the pattern, we have A, B, and C blocks, and you need to make however many of each is listed in the pattern for your size. So because I'm making the king size, I need 24 of each. That's a lot of blocks, but they'll go fast because we've already done most of the work. And I'm going to start with the B blocks just because I've been putting so much energy into matching up these little four patches. I'm looking for a variety of print and color. I'm going to look through my pile here and see what I find that's a little bit unique and different and see what I like. That one looks good. It has some of the same colors, but it has a little bit of variety in print too. They're not the same prints. So I'm going to go ahead and lay these right sides together. When I'm making these decisions, if there is any seams to be matched up, I will go ahead and pin it at that moment so that I don't have to touch it again. I can just go straight to the sewing machine. Because we pressed our seams open, it takes a little more effort to match up the seams, but it's not that hard either. So I open up the seam, make sure that it's matching, and then I add a pin on the diagonal, and then I'm gonna add a second one here at the top of the, the seam, just to make sure that my seam allowance doesn't flip while I'm sewing it, so that I can keep everything lying nice and flat. And then because I have pins already, I'm going to pin the front and the back of the seam, and maybe just one more in the middle for a good measure, make sure things don't shift too much. So five pins on each one, that might seem a little excessive. And if I was just doing it at the machine one by one, I would probably only put these two here for the matching. But since I'm already pinning, I'm just gonna go ahead and add it. It's kinda does end up saving me time later because I don't have to unpick anything <laughs> and I don't have to stop and start a whole bunch as I'm sewing to, go ahead, to make sure that I have everything lined up where I need it to be. You do what works best for you and that's that's how I'm going to work forward with these blocks. The next block that we need to make is very similar in that it has just the triples. We're gonna pull the triples out and then it has the units made last week. So I decided I don't like these two prints together even though I like how calming the most of the block is or most of the unit is. Maybe this one's better. So I think I'll still move this over here. <laughs> I don't want too much color next to the green because it's a little bit, um, it's a little hyper that green is. So, and then I will just go ahead and pin again and make sure that everything is where I need it to be. These are my most favorite pins and you'll see me using them often. They are called the Clover Patchwork Pins. They're by Clover and they're patchwork pins. They're fine and I use them for all the little bits like matching seams, not necessarily for sewing rows together because they are so fine, they tend to not hold up in a heavier situation. But I do love, they just glide through the fabric so easily. If you've not had luck with pins in the past, you might try this set and see how they work for you because they are definitely a game changer. Let's talk about making nine patches. So I'm gonna set these pieces aside for now. I'll come back to them. 
but some of my nine patches the colors are kind of harsh and I want to make sure that I spread those out so I'm going to pull the 20 you know 24 of the pieces because I'm making the king size so if you're making the throw 10 of these triples that you want to make sure you incorporate with a, you know something that you really like to where the it all evens out these little mind games we play right I'm going to pull out a bunch of these because this corally red is really bright and so is this green with the black on top and then some of these blue ones are also a little much for me I love, I love it overall. I think it's going to be a great pop of color in my quilt top. And that's why I did keep them in, <laughs> but they're not my favorites. And I want to make sure that they're not all alone without any of my favorites when it comes time to having them in the quilt block. Then I will go through and start finding the pieces that I want to use with them. And this just allows me to mellow them out. And you can leave them at the bottom. You can put them in the middle. That's entirely up to you in the next stage of the process. But again, with the, with the seam allowances, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that they are matching. And then add a pin and add a second pin. So that's how I deal with the nine patches and any of the the two loud colors. So in these I will go ahead and pin the front and the back again of the seam just to make sure that I don't have to stop and do it while I'm chain piecing. And this keeps me moving forward, making progress in the small bits of time that I have available. As you can see, it's not a hard and fast process. There's a lot of ups and downs and decisions to be made, but you get to make them and it's your project. This week, go ahead and finish all of your blocks, have them sewn together, pressed, and ready to be incorporated into a quilt top. I can't wait to see what you're sewing. I hope that you've found this helpful and you'll give the video a like and also leave me a comment about how you deal with your least favorite prints. Do you do something similar or do you have a different idea? I'd love to know. So thanks so much for stitching with me today and I will be back with more soon.